Chapter 2 System Piping Hydronic heating offers flexibility and there are many types of systems in operation. An individual building can include several different types of systems. For example, there can be a one pipe system on the main floor and a series loop in the basement. Each of these systems would typically be piped with a separate zone to reduce energy consumption and to give the occupants better control over their comfort. The series loop is the simplest and most common design. Each zone is made up of a single run of piping. Water flows from the boiler through each heat emitter and then returns to the boiler. The advantages of a series loop system are that it requires less pipe and fittings. There is a relatively lower cost to install a series loop compared to other systems. And there are no special valves or fittings required. There are, however, disadvantages. The temperature at the first heat emitter can be significantly higher than what is supplied to the last heat emitter. Rooms at the beginning of the loop may overheat, while rooms at the end of the loop may underheat. Care must be taken when sizing the heat emitters because the temperature drop in the loop affects the heat output of the emitters. A split series loop overcomes some of the disadvantages of a standard series loop by piping the radiation into separate zones. These systems have either a common supply or a common return, dividing the single loop into two smaller loops that can be on the same zone or split into separate zones. There are advantages and disadvantages of a split loop as well. It allows better temperature control, thus it's more comfortable than a standard single loop, and smaller diameter piping can be used due to shorter runs. But it requires additional pipe fittings and components, and it is slightly more expensive to install. A one pipe system utilizes one main pipe that connects from the boiler supply to the boiler return. Heat emitters are connected to the main by two smaller feed and return pipes that are fitted with diverter T's. These T's cause some of the water circulating in the main to flow through each heat emitter. Typically, one standard T and one diverted T are installed for each heat emitter. Sometimes it's necessary to install two diverter T's for a single heat emitter to provide enough water flow. For example, when the heat emitter is lower than the main pipe, there will be insufficient flow due to the buoyancy effect. In this situation, two diverter T's must be used and the spacing between them should be the same as the width of the heat emitter. In a two pipe direct return system, one pipe carries water from the boiler to the heat emitters and another pipe brings it back to the boiler. The heat emitter closest to the boiler has the shortest run of piping and the one furthest away has the longest run. Less water will flow through the heat emitters that are furthest away, so balancing valves must be installed on each heat emitter to even out the flow of water through the circuit. With a two-pipe reverse return system, the heat emitters are piped in parallel to separate supply and return pipes. These systems operate on a first supplied, last return basis. The supply connection of the heat emitters that's closest to the boiler has the return connection furthest from the boiler. The water traveling through each heat emitter has to travel approximately the same distance, so the flow through each is about the same. Primary secondary piping arrangements provide better flow and temperature control than other systems and also help to prevent flue gas condensation caused by low temperature return water. One pipe primary secondary systems are the most common for residential applications. A one pipe primary secondary system is similar to a standard one pipe system, but with standard T's instead of diverter T's. Each secondary circuit has its own circulator that must be piped to pump water away from the primary loop. The T's that connect the secondary circuit should be no more than 12 inches or four pipe diameters, whichever is less, apart. If the secondary circuit is piped in three quarter inch, the T's should be three inches apart. 
The water temperature drops as it passes through the primary loop, so it's important to connect the secondary circuits that require the hottest water, like baseboard, at the beginning of the primary loop, and those that require lower temperatures, like radiant, towards the end. When there's a call for heat, both the primary and secondary circulators operate, and the secondary circulator pulls water from and returns it to the primary loop.